Uh, hello everybody, this is a DMA's FMG hack session and today we are going to talk about the internal medicine. So speaking about the internal medicine, we are having a variety of uh, high yield area people but speaking of a medicine part, the main area where to be covered is your neurology, cardiology and pulmonology are the three areas where you should master in your medicine where you may expect to see at least 40 to 45 percentage of the question. Rest all covers the remaining 55 percent while the highest area of target is somewhere to be on your cardiovascular and respiratory and nervous system are the three sections where you expect to see a lot and lot of questions. So speaking about this now uh, speaking about the areas now, we DMA will devise a strategy for your internal medicine. How to approach this internal medicine? We divide into eight sections. One, what are the diseases that you have to cover in these eight sections? In that way, you can master the internal medicine in a very easy format. For example, like we are having, we divided the internal medicine as cardiology pulmonology, gastroenterology, nephrology, endocrinology, hematology, infectious diseases and rheumatology. So in this eight section, we discuss about the series of, uh, you know, like uh, diseases which contributes for this uh, internal medicine and you cover this bare minimum diseases and your internal medicine is kind of like a okay to you. So speaking about the cardiology, so in the cardiology, the variety of uh, diseases we are going to cover. The very first disease is your CAD and the ACS. So, uh, you know, like a CAD and the ACS are the one thing that you have to remember uh, in case of your cardiology, because what type of EMA and when, what are the symptoms, interventional measures, loading dose and maintenance dose, loading dose, maintenance dose, what are the symptoms and uh, you know like uh, when do you thrombolize and when do you not thrombolize thrombolysis criteria CAG pattern and uh, PCI or CABG pattern you have to remember this and then you have this cardiomyopathies and heart failure are the second highest areas where you expect to see a lot and lot of questions so uh, for the cardiology heart failure and what type of heart failure types of heart failure and management strategy for each type of heart failure. Types of heart failure and management strategies are pretty important. Management strategies are pretty important. And then you have the arrhythmias and conduction disorder. All the antiarrhythmic classification are pretty high yield. Antiarrhythmic classification are pretty high yield. You should not miss it. And then you have the hypertension and its management in the pharmacology itself. We covered about the antihypertensives. So you need to know about the criteria of your hypertension and the management, uh, you know, the guidelines for the management. So criteria for hypertension and grading of hypertension are pretty important and its management principles. Then valvular heart diseases, all abnormal S1, S2, S3, S4, extra heart sounds extra heart sounds and abnormal heart sounds abnormal heart sounds and you know like uh, technically speaking your AR, AS, MR, MS all the things are uh, you know like important in this scenario and then you have this infective endocarditis and pericardial diseases speaking about the infective endocarditis and pericardial diseases all the types of organism causing the infective endocarditis and the pericarditis organism causing the infection and then the type of infections and what type of interventions you will do for this infective endocarditis this covers the entire cardiology section people and along with that you have to remember all the types of ecg in the case of your cardiac, uh, in the case of your cardiology, all types of ECG are pretty important and what are the diseases which has been mentioned here are pretty important. You should cover this entire thing in this scenario. Okay. In this scenario, you have to cover the entire thing. This is all about the cardiology, which is the first division of your internal medicine. Now we move on to the pulmonology. Speaking about the pulmonology, what are the diseases you have to cover? The main and utmost of this is you should not leave a single point as your COPD. COPD and asthma that you have to remember what is the grading of asthma, what type of a base treatment strategy, grading, treatment strategy, 
criteria named criteria or unnamed criteria and then you have this you know symptoms and pathogenesis are pretty pretty high yield area symptoms and pathogenesis are pretty high yield area here and then you have the pneumonia and LRTA so pneumonia what type of pneumonia and organism causing the pneumonia what type of organisms can contribute to what type of pneumonia and then you know like uh, antibiotics or like you know like a treatment strategy I rather right treatment strategy for pneumonia a pretty high yield one then you have a TB TB you study that in a PSM you study that in a patho you know microbiology microbiology and you study that in the pathology too so TB the strategies for the management of a TB what type of categories are there and how are you going to treat each and every TB what type of TB drugs are there what is the side effects of your rifampicin and what is the trial side effects of your isoniazid all of them all of them will be important and it comes in the series of your pulmonology and apart from that you have the interstitial lung diseases pulmonary embolism pulmonary hypertension and uh, you know like a respiratory failure uh, type 1 type 2 respiratory failure and what are the possible causes and associations that things you should keep in the mind so the main area of interest in the pulmonology is COPD pulmonary embolism pulmonary hypertension and uh, respiratory failure and then you have the pneumonia these five regions you have to master in terms of your pulmonology then you have the next we move on to the gastroenterology so speaking about the gastroenterology when you are dealing with the you know like a hepatectomy and acute pancreatitis chronic pancreatitis and the surgical part where the main focus of interest in the gastroenterology here in the medicine part is your peptic ulcer disease and hepatitis mainly so peptic ulcer and the hepatitis are the main modality of choice you should master in the medicine where you least see it in the other subject and then you have this IBD which will be covered in surgery too if your surgery IBD is so good you just uh, you just read the management of your drugs through uh, for the treatment of your inflammatory bowel disease and then you have this pancreatitis and pancreatic disorders where you will study a pancreatitis acute and chronic in terms of your medical management category if you study along with the medical management and causes and signs the, for example like uh, uh, you have this uh, Mohammed prayer sign and all this uh, named signs and things you will study along with the surgery and medicine both so if you add that uh, you know that points to the uh, if you add the medical management strategy to the surgical notes or you have the surgical management strategy to the medicine notes it will complement each other so this pancreatitis and inflammatory bowel disorders you can study combinedly with your medicine and surgery and you can add all the stuffs and you can keep it like a single whole area because you definitely get one question from this any of this two okay you definitely get a question so and then you have a gastrointestinal bleeding and management which is quite really important in terms of your surgery as well as medicine too and rest are all like uh, you know like a functional gastrointestinal disorders like uh, you know like celiac disease and uh, hip sprung disease these are the things you have to remember in terms of a medicine where you least expect to see it in the surgery okay but in surgery also you will see but the points you see in the medicine and surgery will be very very you know like uh, it shows a lot of difference so you have to remember so in a gastroenterology I rather simplifically say it's like uh, you know hepatitis peptic ulcer disease and GRD association are pretty high yield super high yield you should not miss okay and then you have a nephrology so in the nephrology AK and CKD management strategies nephrotic nephritic syndrome speaking about that nephrotic nephritic syndromes where you have to read that along with your you know like uh, uh, along with your pathology notes uh, you have to manage it uh, you have to manage it there and then apart from that you have electrolyte abnormalities that you have to study along with the physiology along with the acid based physiology you have to study so take their acid based physiology notes where you study about the respiratory acidosis alkalosis and the metabolic acidosis alkalosis and then you have this compensatory mechanisms you study that here in a very detailed section and what type of features the patient comes to you with the and abg shows this following pattern this type of questions may be asked and you have to uh, you have to read it uh, read the entire you know acid based physiology and then electrolyte anomalies like a you know like a hypo hypernatremia hypo hyperkalemia 
hypo hypernatremia kalemia calcemia these things you have to remember so this electrolyte abnormality should be studied along with your you know like acid base disorders in the physiology section so you should keep that in mind and then you have this uta and renal stone that will be studied along with the surgery Allah, you have to read all type of renal stones and then you have to put them like a ESWL and a PCNL and their complication together with the surgery and medicine. You can find it very, very easily. You can wear, you can find it very, very easy and you master it together. And then renal transplantation and immunosuppressive therapy and then hypertensive emergencies and renal artery stenosis. This is a pure medicine topic, people. Pure medicine topic, you have to read it. All the complications of your renal artery stenosis, what type of things you may expect to see and what type of complications you may expect to see in the patient that you have to read it in the uh, medicine. So renal artery stenosis, nephrotic nephritic syndrome, AKI, CKD are the topic of interest in terms of your, uh, you know, like a medicine, especially in a medical part of your kidney disease. While you have to read about the renal stones and, you know, the PCNL and ESWL complications, UTI and, uh, you know, like uh, these things should be studied along with the surgery and electrolyte abnormalities will be studied together with your acid based physiology like you know like respiratory acidosis metabolic acidosis and then you have this respiratory alkalosis metabolic alkalosis their compensation hypohypernatremia hypohyperkalemia hypohypercalcemia their features how to manage each one of them this should be studied along with the physiology especially along with the acid based disorders and the pathology too if you have if you have studied there, there. okay so this is quite an important topic in the uh, nephrology section that you should not miss. Okay, then you are having an endocrinology. Speaking of the endocrinology, you have this. Uh, the main one area in the endocrinology is your Cushing's, and then you have the diabetes hypohypothyroidism. This hypohypothyroidism can be studied along with can be studied along with you know like uh, surgery, but Cushing's diabetes are the two main diseases that you should not miss in the case of your endocrinal medicine disorder cushing's and diabetes mellitus are two diseases where you may expect to get the questions and where you will study more and more content in the medicine area only so cushing's diabetes keep that in mind when you are reading endocrine endocrinology then you are reading about the hypohypothyroidism and uh, you know adrenal insufficiency and congenital adrenal hyperplasia and you have the pituitary disorders like you know like the dwarfism and uh, you know gigantism and acromegaly and you have this prolactin disorders and uh, you know calcium and bone disorders everything can be correlated with the other subject but what you purely study in the medicine and you keep that uh, you should keep that in mind because you expect to see the questions there is your diabetes mellitus and your cushings you, you should not mix that with the other subject even if you mix that master it in the medicine okay what type of diabetes mellitus what is a 1.5 diabetes mellitus type 3 type 4 diabetes mellitus these are the special type of diabetes where you may expect to see and gestational diabetes mellitus will be asked in questions in in integration with the og so master diabetes and cushings in endocrinology you should not miss okay then you have this uh, then you have this hematology so you and you study anemia leukemia lymphoma in pathology so main area here is your hemorrhagic disorder and coagulopathy and thrombophilic disorder and thromboembolic diseases that you should not miss here while anemia leukemia lymphoma you study that in the pathology you master those in the pathology but you study the you know like a treatment of choice for example iron supplementation folic acid supplementation what those to be given what are those additional assistance that you can master it here and what are, how do you classify the iron deficiency anemia all those things you study that here but technically the main points of anemia leukemia and lymphoma should be mastered in the pathology and then you have this uh, you know like a stem cell transplantation that is a unique topic that you have to master in medicine and apart from that you may have infectious diseases so infectious diseases these are all kind of like you know low yield areas where you have to master this in the microbiology this entire thing in the microbiology antibiotic resistance and appropriate antimicrobial use this is the medicine topic people development of your antibiotic resistant and appropriate antimicrobial use 
the judicial use of antibiotics is to be studied in the medicine it will not only help you to pass the fmg it will also make you a good doctor a good doctor is the one who uses the antibiotics in a judicial pattern he, the, not the one who completely avoids the antibiotic not the one who prescribes antibiotics on a simple infection infections no a good doctor is the one who know how to use the antibiotics if you know how to play it with the antibiotics, then you, are, you will be a good doctor. So understanding the judicial importance or judicial use of your antibiotic, you know, like it is very, very important. So you read it in the medicine column. So this is the topic of interest that you have to read in the medicine. And apart from that, hospital acquired infection and infection control measures that you study along with the PSM. And the rest are all like a different thing, like a low yield thing you have to remember. So infectious things should be covered in a microbiology along with an antibiotic resistance and the use of antibiotics are the two things you have to study in the medicine. And speaking about the rheumatology, so rheumatology is another area of interest where you see the main important disease where SLE and your rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis and spondyloarthropathies okay these are the four diseases that you should not miss then polymyalgia rheumatica and you know the types of arthritis and crystal arthropathies are the low yield area but what are the four things you should not miss in rheumatology and you definitely get a question from rheumatology that to one of these four diseases mainly either rheumatoid or spondyloarthropathies or sles or osteoarthritis these are the four regions where you should know four diseases that you should not miss you should cover each and every inch of it you should cover each and every inch of it okay anyway fine thank you for watching the video we will uh, see you with the next video